Now we want to take what we've learned about the at least one rule and apply it to a couple new situations. So let me go back and review it real quickly. The at least one rule says if you want to find the probability of at least one something, then you find the probability of zero somethings and subtract that from one. And we saw this little example here with roulette, which was actually pretty easy both directions, but we soon realize that in the long run, the one that uses this yellow row down here at the bottom will actually be the better way to do it. And that's the probability of none, no wins, and then subtracting from one. So we're going to use that for graduates. So we're going to select two graduates at random, just like roulette. So we're going to use two. What is the probability that at least one of them was getting a certificate? Now notice we're assuming that degree types are independent that there's no siblings or whatever in this um, degree type, which might not actually be a great assumption to make, but that's what we're going with. Okay, so let's start with just the simple basics. Before you get trying to do the big problem, don't try to apply the rule directly right away. Try to just figure out the stepping stones, the building blocks you're going to need for that rule. So let's start with certificates. So for a single student, the probability of getting a certificate is 0.2117. That means the probability of not getting a certificate is 1 minus 0.2117, which is 0.7883. So for a single student, you have the probability of certificate and the probability of not certificate. Right, that's going to be helpful because we're going to use those building blocks in the actual problem. Okay, so now let's talk about two students. So for two students, we want the probability of at least one certificate. But according to that rule up here, that means that we want one minus the probability of no certificates. So let me go back. So that means you don't want a certificate for either one of these students. You don't want a certificate for the first student or nor for the second student. So that's one minus the probability of cert not certificate on the first student and not certificate on the second student. It doesn't say and anywhere, but of course it must be an and. Once you're dealing with two students, two rolls of the roulette wheel or spins of the roulette wheel, two um, cards chosen at random, whatever. Once you're dealing with multiples like that, it has to be the multiplication rule. And for our purposes at this point, it's going to be independent. All right, so what are the chances the first one is not a certificate? Well, you found up here the probability that any one student is not getting a certificate. It's 0.7883. So you're going to multiply the not getting certificate for the first student times not getting a certificate for the second student. Right there. And that means you're going to take 1 minus 0.7883 times 0.7883. And when you do that with your calculator, 0 0.7883 three squared, you get 0.6214 and then one minus that results will get you 0.3786. And of course what we're doing here would actually work for four students, seven students. I mean for four students you just have one minus 0.7883 to the fourth. For seven students it'd be one minus 0.7883 to the seventh. Simple as that. All right, you're going to select three cards at random from a standard randomly um, shuffled poker deck with replacement after each draw. What is the probability that you select at least one spade? Hmm. Okay, so this is a classical probability problem again, unlike this one up of here, which was empirical probability because it came from data. So classical can be a little bit different because you have to really think about all the different possibilities. So one key that I italicized here is the with replacement part. Now I didn't give you that for my health. I gave you that because I need you to know that the samples are independent, or the, excuse me, the cards are independent. So once you know it's independent, then you know you're going to be able to use the multiplication rule. Now let's work with a single card here. When you just draw one card from a deck, the chances it's a spade is one-fourth because one-fourth of the deck is spades. And the chances it's not a spade would be three-fourths, right? Because there's three out of the four suits are not spades, the hearts, the diamonds, and the clubs. So that's what it is for one card. But we're not going to work with one card here. We're going to work with three cards. So with three cards, it gets a little more complicated. We want the probability that at least one spade is drawn. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take the probability of no spades on any of the cards. No, no spade on the first, no spade on the second, no spade on the third. And we're going to take that away from one. So let me write that down right here. So I want no spade on the first, no spade on the second, and no spade on the third. Now it doesn't say and, but it has to be an and because you have three cards. Once you're dealing with multiples, it has to be the multiplication rule. All right, so I want no spade on the first. Well, that's three-fourths. No spade on the second. That's another three-fourths. And no spade on the third. So you're going to multiply the probability of no spade times itself three times, which means you're going to take three-fourths times itself three times. Now, three times three times three from our times tables, we know that is 27. And four times four times four is 64. Or you could use a calculator, you know, whatever. So you'll find that it's 1 minus 27 over 64. So let me grab back to my calculator here. 1 minus 27 divided by 64 is that in a decimal. And if I press math 1, there it is in a fraction. So let me grab this. And there's our results. All right. So we have seen the at least one rule applied to both a classical probability for the spades and an empirical probability and you realize you're going to have to be multiplying and then subtracting from one whenever you're dealing with two draws, two students, three kids, things like that.